Hi guys and welcome to the Carla Garrick Show. It's episode 15 and I am delighted to be joining you again. Although to be honest, I had to kind of psych myself up a little bit this morning. I have a blinding headache and I hope you will bear with me. Uh, I really am trying to stick to the schedule and make sure that I'm doing this. It's not always easy. But I'm here, I'm trying, and I hope you will give me the leeway that possibly this uh, little nugget of mine needs with, with, uh, with the headache. Anyway, today uh, we're going to be covering basically three things. I'm going to give you a quick update on what's happening in the free state. So, uh, you know, what happened in the past week and what's coming up. Then we will be talking about this Pfizer report that came out. I did a little jo uh, blog post on it, um, but there is initial information coming out now from Big Pharma about what's up with, uh, with those jabby jabs. And then uh, finally, I will be talking actually a little bit about how I had to like psych myself up to do this today. And, um, and I'll, I'll delve into that a little bit as we move on. The good news is I put the timer on, so that's a good start, and uh, we'll just play it by ear. So, uh, what's happening in the free state? There's always something exciting going on, and today uh, I'm... I, you know, I wanted to let you know, first of all, over the weekend on Saturday, we had a dun 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 hockey match between the New Hampshire Libertarian Party and the New Hampshire GOP Republicans. And it was an ice hockey match that took place in Manchester at the Coliseum. A uh, huge turnout. I was really surprised. Uh, Mari Fontaine, a wonderful activist here in Manchester, did an incredible job putting together a program. And um, and I was amazed, man. The, the, the skaters were surprisingly, amazingly good. Um, I even saw some like older Republicans out there on the ice. So Kudos to you, Steve. I was very impressed. Uh, the outcome of that hockey match was Libertarians won! Yay! So uh, it was it was a tight match. It was 2-0 to the Republicans at the start, and then it became tighter and tighter, and the final winning goal was actually done in overtime. And the final score was five to four for the Libertarian Party of New Hampshire. And, uh, and that's pretty exciting. I'm sure we're gonna do this again. I could see it becoming a really great event. It was a charity a hockey match. We did it to support the New Hampshire Children's uh, uh, Children's Scholarship Fund, which of course is a venue or an avenue or an organization that you can donate to if you're an organization or a company. It is a tax-free way to support school choice in New Hampshire. And so I believe they raised almost $2,500 for that program. And of course, as we uh, this was the first time this event was done, so I'm going to assume as we sort of figure it out and ramp it up over the years, I could see it becoming a really fun, healthy little rivalry. Uh, I'm pretty sure we would love to have the Democrats come play too. So let's see what we can do. Let's keep it fun, light, and sporty, and all of that good stuff. So that was that was pretty exciting and fun. Also coming up in the Free State over uh, this weekend is we have our annual Liberty Forum event coming up. This is one of the Free State Project's signature events. Of course, we have the Porcupine Freedom Festival, which takes place every June up in the White Mountains, so up in Lancaster, New Hampshire at Rogers Campground. But before then, our winter event is Liberty Forum, and you can learn more at nhlibertyforum.com. Sadly for you, but cool for us, is it's sold out. And by the way, Pork Fest is going to sell out. It'll probably sell out this week. So if you need to get your Pork Fest tickets, that's P O R C F E S T.com for your Pork Fest tickets. Liberty Forum this weekend. So we have some fancy dinners that we're doing all over Manchester, bringing groups of people to different businesses to really showcase what the city itself has to offer. And then um, Saturday and Sunday are full days of 
programming. In fact, if I can figure this out here, I um, will be calling up a screen. All right, so that should now be on the stream yard, which hopefully I can edit in. Um, all right, so this weekend, Liberty Forum, it is one of our premier events. It will be taking place over at uh, the hotel that I'm blanking on near Backyard Brewery over near the airport. We have several brilliant speakers who are coming in. You can see people like um, Michael Mungner from Duke University. I don't, I'm actually not familiar with him. We have people like Dory, uh, Corey DeAngelis coming. He's from the American Federation for Children. He is a brilliant um, school choice advocate. He is someone who has really pushed this notion that the money should follow the child, that we're really supporting education of individuals, of students, and not really, uh, you know, supporting a system or a building, right? So. Uh, for folks who've been following along know where I stand on school choice. I think the more choices we provide people, uh, the better it is for everyone, which is part of the reason why I'm so anti-state, because of course, in the end, the government is always trying to come up with one solution to a problem where we know there are a myriad of solutions to every problem and um, allowing the marketplace of ideas to function properly, to, to compete, to come, to complement, to help each other, to collaborate, to come up with the best ideas is really the way to do it. And that allows a lot of uh, uh, quickness, uh, fluidness, uh, changes can be made quickly as opposed to the government where everything is just sort of it just sort of limps along and takes forever. So we have Corey DeAngelis, there's Cody Wilson I believe will be coming, Jeffrey Tucker, he's always a big uh, big draw. Preston Byrne is coming, he's the lawyer in-house counsel I believe for Gab which is a more uh, free speech platform that doesn't actually censor people because that's very very un-American. Um, I'll be speaking Lily Tang Williams, who's running for office, is speaking. Jeremy Kaufman, he's also running. We have Melissa Blasek. Uh, really, uh, uh, oh wow, Frank Edelblue will be there. Kate Baker from the Children's Scholarship Fund that we just talked about. So really just a fantastic, and Per Byland, uh, Byland from the Mises Institute, he's an economist. Uh, I've been following his work for a long time. So anyway, it's gonna be a fantastic weekend. I'm really, really excited that uh, we get to do this, that we get to showcase the best of New Hampshire and the Granite State to these fabulous, smart, intellectual, free thinkers while also learning um, more stuff, you know, because the more you know, the more you can do good things. Uh, the last little FSP report is we had our monthly new movers party last night. We have that at our community center here in Manchester. So that was at the Quill. Uh, we had at least 10 new movers. Um, a couple of people who are visiting to just check it out. Some people who are here for the week prior to Liberty Forum. Some people have come up for the bus tour that uh, Dennis Pratt, the organizer of Porkfest, will be hosting on Friday. So they've been like figuring that tour out. You can be part of this very fancy bus tour that'll take you around the Merrimack Valley this time. I believe the first one in December was in the Seacoast area. This one's in the Merrimack area. You could even get a uh, a tour of the state house up in Concord. So um, check that out. I believe the bus tickets may still be available. So I will throw the link down in the show notes for today. Uh, so that's just briefly a little taste of what's up in the free state. And um, and so never, ever, ever a dull moment. And uh, come out to the events, check our calendar, fsp.org forward slash calendar. Come introduce yourself, come say hi. Now, shifting gears. I got this Pfizer report somewhere online. I don't even remember where. Um, and you may recall that the big pharma companies originally said they did not want to disclose any information about what 
the safety and efficacy after the fact is for these experimental gene therapies um, for 75 years. They were like, hey, FDA, hey, CDC, nah, we're not going to tell you. And rightly, uh, several organizations were horrified and shocked, and they were like, yeah, we don't think so. They filed a bunch of FOIA requests, that's Freedom of Information, inform um, act stuff so you can say well you know you're, you're getting public money and all of that so we want uh to see what you're up to so this is the report that came out now this one is a little older it actually only covers from december 2020 through february 2021 so we're lagging by about a year in this report which as a lawyer and as someone who did work on uh, corporate documents and who understands the game, I will say hats off to the lawyers working on this because the shenanigans and clear manipulation of the data in order to make it as difficult as possible to understand, which clearly was the goal of this document, it's really well done. What do I mean by that? I mean that there is a slew of acronyms. So if you're not up to speed with every one of these terms, as you're reading, it gets confusing. You're like, what is the EAU? What does this do? What's this? You know, so there's that. Then also there are a lot of redactions. So even though they're supposed to be transparent and tell us what's going on, they're taking out data and numbers in particular that would make it so that you can start to actually analyze the data on your own or compare things. So by way of example, it seems important to know how many doses were administered so that you can do comparatives, right? So if there were a million doses and one person died, then we know it's one out of a million. But if there were a million doses, but if you don't know how many doses there were, then the numbers they're disclosing start to become a little more problematic to really put in the correct context. It's also very beyond the redactions, the acronyms. We also have a lot of footnote action happening. So uh, that is where they put you in an infinite loop of footnotes. There was actually a very, very funny scene in, in Veep where, uh, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't in Veep. It was, um, oh, it's some alien story. I forget the name. Do, brain Dead. Brain Dead. If you haven't actually watched the show, I would highly recommend it. I think it's probably the best uh, zombie alien invasion story that uh, it's Ridley Scott. It's a one season series and it's set in Washington DC and it's about these aliens that infiltrate the government and it's hilarious. But anyway, in that show, they, uh, they actually have a situation where they're analyzing the budget and, uh, and the aliens have put something in the budget, but they don't want people to know. So they've only done a paper document. It's unsearchable online and everything is looped through the footnotes, right? So it's sort of like, well, I have to tell you something, but I'm gonna make it as hard as possible for you to figure it out. So there's a bit of that going on in the Pfizer report as well. Beyond the, um, the uh, sorry, I'm just gonna try and pull this uh, screen share up now to see, okay, so stop screen. So now I'm gonna say share. I'm gonna say stop screen and put that back. Then I am, bear with me, I will get better at this guys, but you know, it's one step at a time and it's a one lady show here. So, um, oh goodness, okay. So share screen from Brave Tab to Pfizer. All right, so here was the important part and I blogged about this this morning. So in this one particular, piece of um, information is nine pages, nine pages of side effects that are pretty like horrific looking. And um, I, I'll just show you the, what those nine pages look like. I don't have that one up on the screen, but you can see here, I mean, it's just, you know, it's a mess of, things that sound horrific and horrifying. So 
that gives you a taste, right? It starts with A and it goes all the way through. That being said, this part is the part I found interesting. So it says here that Pfizer has all, all excuse me, Pfizer has also taken a multiple taken a multiple actions to help alleviate the large increase of adverse event reports. This includes significant technology enhancements and process and workflow solutions, as well as increasing the number of data entry and case processing colleagues. To date, so basically what they're saying is, we've had so many reports of adverse events. Uh, you'll recall they say these are rare, but now they're saying when they were forced to tell you that they actually have to spin up an entire new department. So they say, to date, Pfizer has onboarded approximately we don't know, it's footnote redacted before. Uh, they have onboarded approximately X amount of additional full-time employees with the acronym FTE, just in case, you know, we could throw in another thing to confuse you. More are joining each month with an expected total of more than, again, redacted before footnote that is also redacted, additional resources till the end of June, 2021. Then in the next session, section, they talk about the safety database, and then the general overview says, it's estimated that approximately redacted B4 doses of X were shipped worldwide. So as I explained, this is problematic because it means the data means nothing because we can't actually figure out what's going on. Now, regardless of where you stand on the issue, I say, look, if you want to get vaccinated, that is entirely within your right. My issues come from when people are trying to mandate, i.e. force your friends and neighbors to do something to their body that they don't want to do. That is what a mandate is. It's unconscionable and it's actually against the New Hampshire Constitution, which says that your right to self, uh, um, your right uh, to self-conscious, is that what it's called, is inalienable. Um, but that actually brings me to the segue I want to do in the last uh, seven minutes or so that we have here for the show. You know, as I said at the start, it can be a little hard to do this, right? Like I'm a one woman show. I put out finally, I figured out and I have a lady who's helping me. Thank you so much, Masha. Um, to cut clips from these sort of rambling crazy shows and um, and so I've been doing the shorter clips and I've been putting them out on Twitter so yesterday I was like yay me look at me go and I put it out and then uh, you know the feedback was immediately like you need better sound you need better quality this you need to like practice more you need to and every single feedback point was right i do need to do all of that but here's the reality i don't have a script writer i don't have a lights guy i don't have a tech guy i don't have a makeup lady no one's doing this fabulous hair for me this is like a one lady show and when i'm lucky i have half a person which is louie who might switch the camera on for me and uh, Brandon, of course, from, from Manch TV, who will pull the files and, and slap the intros on the start and the finish. Why am I mentioning that? So one of the ideas I have for this show, and, and it's actually a book that I, I think I'm, actually it's a book I'm working on, so I'll just put it out into the universe, uh, to talk about the self, right? So you'll recall in last week's episode, I, I mentioned something where I said, your sense of self is developed and it's in balance when your mind and your body are actually in sync. So when you have your true sense of self, that's when what you are telling yourself and your actions are actually simpatico. And this is important because as someone who's a, you know, a recovering alcoholic or a recovered, I guess, I don't really even like the term alcoholic, right? But when I decided to stop drinking, part of the reason was 
I was like, but I don't like when I tell myself, oh, I'm gonna have two glasses of wine and then I have like two bottles of wine, right? So that would be an example where your mind and your body, your actions and your thoughts are not correlated correctly. So I think for this, this book and this process and maybe where I can add value hopefully to your life is to start to re-explore our sense of self and what the different self words are, um, you know, like just off the top of my head, you know, self-inflicted, self-esteem, self-worth, self, you know, we don't talk about these notions anymore. We, we've externalized everything. Everything is society and community and somehow we just pretend like this huge group of people is just a huge group without looking at the actual reality, which is uh, every group is made up of individuals. So again, where I hope I can add value is for us to explore this sense of self. So when I was thinking this morning, you know, how to do this and how to just kind of push through it, right? I happened to run across this, this uh, beautiful, image from Tim Urban. Now, if you're not familiar with Tim Urban's work, I highly recommend you follow him on Facebook. He's one of these people who can just take really, really complex ideas and boil them down into a nutshell. So what Tim did, this was at the turn of the, the year, he had 21 thoughts from 2021 that I'd like to take into 2022. And he, he talks about, you know, your life paths that are closed to you and then your life paths that are open to you. And obviously, anything that's in the past is a life path that is now closed to you because that's past. It's, you know, we're over it. But your life today and going forward, all of that is within your control. So in the same way that I did not want to do this show today, my head hurt, I'm not in the mood, the dogs were annoying me, it, you know, it, I, I was like, ah, what do I have to say? Who cares what I have to say? All of that stuff, right? But then I read this and what Tim said was, um, this is the first tweet on that uh, artwork and I will put it up. It says, it sucks jumping into a cold pool, but once you're in, it's fine. This same pattern applies to getting started with work each day, having a hard conversation with a friend, singing in front of people. I will hopefully never have to do that for you guys, but maybe I will, right? Like maybe I'm, I'm not a great singer, I'm just warning you, but I don't know, maybe someday in the future. Or his other example was breaking up with someone, right? So most of the time, Jumping in is the hardest part. So I want to ask you, if you're sitting at home today, maybe you're watching this on public access television, maybe you're catching me on YouTube, what is something that you want to do that you are holding yourself back with, that you're not jumping into? Because you need to find those things. And in order for us to heal the world and to bring the world back into balance between this like absurd level of collectivism and a reduction of the, the, uh, the individual on behalf of the group, uh, this is an unhealthy way of the world that we have created. We're pretending like there are no people. There is only this collective. And of course, that's insane because you know and I know we're people and we matter, right? So think about something that you want to do that maybe you don't have the courage to do or you're not sure what the next step is. Just identify that thing. And then between now and next week, let's look at for yourself, are there a few steps you can take? Um, is there something, maybe it's as simple as going, gee, I wanna try a new recipe and I'm going to buy all the ingredients and I'm gonna do this thing. And I promise you doing a small project that you then break down and that you then accomplish is the way that you put your mind and body in balance, right? Because if you say to yourself, hey, I'm gonna make this recipe, we'll take that simple example, I'm gonna make this recipe and you do it, 
your sense of accomplishment is something that can then feed into the rest of your life. So it's the little wins, as they say, right, um, that make things better in the long term. So in conclusion, this week's life skill is figuring out how to switch your timer off. <laughs> <laughs> One day, I swear, I will get it all right. Today is not that day, guys. So uh, what will I leave you with? Free State Project's awesome. Our community's awesome. If you're interested in liberty in your lifetime and liberty as a lifestyle, check us out, fsp forward slash fsp.org forward slash calendar. That's where you can come find us. Big Pharma still sucks. And, uh, and you know, do not get a booster. And finally... Life skills are important. You got to do the hard stuff. Jumping in is worth it. You, thanks for joining me for this jump in of craziness. Over the weeks, I'm going to start talking about different self words and break them down. We'll say this one was a pinch of self-conscious with zero self-esteem, but we are done and we're out of time. So for today, all I have to say to you guys is... Uh, subscribe everywhere you can find me, YouTube, follow me on Insta, follow me on Twitter, carlagarrick.com. I put all my work up there, so that's sort of a central repository. Please subscribe to my Odyssey channel if you can. And the most important thing you can do today is to live free and thrive. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll see you again next week. Take care.